Thank you for joining me on this Whistle Stop virtual tour of Bath, one of four UNESCO World Heritage Cities in the UK. To really tell you all about the Roman baths, I need to start at the beginning, when the hot springs were first discovered in 863 AD, according to the legend of Prince Bladud. Bladud was a prince of the Britons, and on his return from his European travels, Bladud contracted leprosy. Banished by his father, the king, Bladud found a job working as a pig herder in the countryside of England. He soon discovered some hot, magical mineral water that appears to cure him and so founds a town there which becomes the modern day Bath. Today, Bladud stands proudly amongst the Roman Bath's architecture, proudly watching over the magical waters that he first discovered. When the Romans invaded in 43 AD, they fell in love with these waters even more than the tribes that lived there before them. One thing the Romans did upon their invasion was to try and integrate themselves with existing tribes. One way of doing this was with the naming of settlements. For example, the largest tribe were the Britons, so they called the land Britannia. They named a settlement on the River Thames Londinium. Sound familiar? Similarly, at Bath, where the hot springs were dedicated to Sulis, the settlement was called Aque Sulis, meaning the waters of Sulis. The Romans then built an incredible network of spa pools and rooms to take advantage of the phenomenon. If you are one of those people who uses a modern day spa, when you see the Roman spas, you'll be amazed to see how similar they are. The Romans built warm water pools, but also early forms of saunas, steam rooms, and even a plunge pool. The Romans then left our country in the years 409 to 410 AD. And when they did so, the Anglo-Saxon people who came after did not care about these hot, magical mineral waters, and Bath was totally abandoned. Eventually, through time, Bath became popular again, as the springs were rediscovered and the King's Bath was built in the 12th century. And later, in the 16th century, the Queen's Bath was built to take on an increase in demand. Of course, then, our Queen was Elizabeth I. Did you know many people in Britain thought she must have been incredibly filthy, as she used to take a bath once a month instead of twice a year like everyone else? The actual Roman baths remained lost until blockages occurred in 1878 and the Royal Engineers were called in to investigate. The cause of the blockage was in fact part of the Roman remains underneath. So they excavated the site and uncovered the intricate network of baths, finding the preserved spars buried below. Meaning? When you get to visit this historic site today, you are in fact walking along the very same cobblestoned pathways and pavements that would have been walked on by Roman feet almost 2,000 years ago. Today, the baths are very much a museum. In Roman times, the bath stood in an enormous barrel-vaulted hall that rose to a height of 40 metres. For many Romans, this may have been the largest building they had ever entered in their life. For you, though, upon entry, you'll walk around the terrace 
in the company of statues of great Romans. Now, please don't be dismayed that you cannot jump into the dirty water, as at the end of your trip around the Roman baths or in the 18th century pump rooms next door, you can drink and taste some of that magical mineral water, served at the same temperature that it comes out of the ground. Warm. It contains 43 minerals, so it's very healthy. Further proof that healthy things don't ever taste nice. Now, of course, Bath isn't purely about the Roman baths. After all, it is a world heritage city, so there is much more to unpack on our journey. And just outside of the entrance into the Roman baths is the beautiful Bath Abbey. There has been a church on that site since the 7th century and has then been rebuilt in the 10th, 12th and 16th centuries, which is why on the Western Front you'll see a statue of King Henry VII. He was the king when the current abbey was recommissioned and how we see it today. It's said that the bishop at the time, a man called Oliver King, had a dream where he saw angels climbing up to heaven, but also saw angels descending down too. So take a look either side of Henry VII and see if you can spot the climbing angels and remember to always be good. Or you may end up as a descending angel instead of ascending. In the 18th century, two men began redesigning the town. John Wood and his son, John Wood, expanded beyond the boundaries of the time, creating buildings with stunning views and large spaces. Two of their most iconic developments are the Circus and the Crescent. The Circus came first, designed by John Wood the Elder, but built by John Wood the Younger after his father's passing. It has a circular collection of houses with three entrances, ensuring the inhabitants can always see out. Called a circus from the Latin word, which meant round. John Wood the Younger was fascinated by Druids and Stonehenge. So he ensured the circus had the same diameter. Also, it's said the circus represents a sun and the adjoining crescent resembles either a setting sun or possibly the moon. But this was a prototype for his great achievement. One road away, the sublime Royal Crescent. The Crescent is the single greatest piece of Georgian architecture anywhere in the world. 30 identical houses built in a Crescent formation. It has to be seen to be truly appreciated. It features a beautiful lawn for relaxing. Another highlight of Bath and one of the most photographed attractions in the city is the stunning Pulteney Bridge. Built as a link to a new area of Bath, which was intended to rival the western half of the town, built by John Wood, the Pulteney Bridge is famous for being one of just four bridges in the world that has shops running along its entire length. Much like the Ponte Vecchio in Florence. The bridge was opened in 1770 and is positioned just by the weir on the river. The weir serves the purpose 
of changing the characteristics of a river. Its height and the water flow, kind of like a small dam. Having the weir there makes the water much safer for us today. As in the past, it truly would have been a bridge over troubled water. Bath is one of the UK's most popular cities, often featured at the top of must-see lists for all of these reasons and more. It is a city where life is allowed to breathe. The water always flows and every guest is greeted with a smile. Thank you for joining me for this tour of Bath. Do check out our previous episodes and look out for more coming your way very soon. So, for now, it's goodbye from me, Tom, and Golden Tours Greyline, and I look forward to discovering more of Britain with you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>